Hey everybody, I wanted to do a video addressing something I just learned recently about this entire uh, ridiculous spat between snake bites and Rakeda and legal mindset. Um, you know, I've done a previous video on uh, this whole situation, just one of them, because um, of certain things that were said about my friends that I didn't like. So, I wanted to do this because I heard that it got even worse. There was more going on that I didn't know in the background. And uh, Mr. Legal Bites apparently wanted to fight Nick Ricada, which is just so ridiculous and uh, uncalled for. I think it's funny. But really, it illustrates something that I have personally just recently experienced myself. And that is the problem of online communities. I know this is something that uh, Rakeda has talked about numerous times, right? It's why he didn't want to be part of the LawTube community. He didn't want it to be a thing because once these communities form, it inevitably always devolves into backstabbing, infighting, drama all the time, and people just screwing each other over uh, friendships get destroyed. People feel like they have to take sides or whatever. And it's just so unnecessary. Um, so I'm going to play a couple clips here. Uh, saddle in, guys. <laughs> this may be a long one, but I hope you enjoy it. We had some stuff happen. We had drama with legal bites. Not new drama. Okay, so he is addressing the situation here, by the way. Um, I believe this video was posted on Nick Ricada's YouTube channel. Um, I'm going to link to videos in the video description. Also, shout out to Alyssa Clips for, I think she kind of put this one together. So I will include the link to her channel and um, the video uh, in the description, guys. Clarifications of drama <laughs> from interested parties about things I've mentioned... And I don't know if you guys all saw it. But Legal Mindset dropped some reality today. Oof. In fact, dropping some of the stuff that even I didn't know. Here's the crazy thing. This is just truth. Nothing else. And again, I said it the other day. And I'll say it now. Don't. Fucking burn me in public. Mm -hmm. I don't yes, do this to anyone. They always fucking do it to themselves. Man, I am so like glad he said that because I really am. I'm not the kind of person that gets involved in these um and in drama, guys, I've been on the internet and I've been doing this stuff for five years. I know my YouTube channel isn't that old, but there, you know, on other platforms, I have been doing this stuff for a long time. I'm not new to the game. And um, every single time someone has that I have helped, that I have kind of mentored or whatever, um, has done this to me, has publicly burned me on their way out the door, I've never said anything about it. Um, I always like to remain very professional and tactful, even if people have been out there lying about me, gossiping about me. I've had people that are, you know, that spend hours of their day just stalking what I'm doing online to try to, I don't know what, and then sitting there talking about it all the time. Like, you guys have no life. You've got nothing better to do. But even when people are lying about me, I don't go out there really and address it. Because the way that I think about it is that I don't have to do anything to you. People that are going to do that, that are going to lie about others, that are going to burn people who helped them, rather than just, hey, if you don't want to be part of the community anymore, go your separate way. Go off and do your own thing. No one's stopping you. But you feel the need to kick people on your way out. People like that tend to destroy themselves. And that's how I always thought about it, man. But at a certain point, you have to stand up for yourself. And if someone's going to do you dirty, then maybe, you know, you 
I don't know, maybe you talk about it or whatever. It's just really frustrating. So I understand exactly <laughs> where he's coming from. They always do it to themselves. Yes. I, I, I don't want anything other than to make jokes. So all I, uh, all I do, seriously, I just want to show up and live stream. Like, that's it. I want to, I want to show up and live stream. I want to tell jokes. I want to make people smile. I want to make an ass of myself, but in the best way. That's all I want. That's all I want. But when you start, this is, this is the lessons of the internet, all right? Yep. If you're going to fuck around, everyone's going to find out. Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks it's fuck around and find out. No, it's... It's you fuck around and everybody finds out the truth. Yeah, and that's the advice I would give to, to people right now. Certain people who are trying to cause division and infighting over nonsense. Um, you know, go ahead and do that. But eventually people are going to see through that. And they're going to think to themselves, if that's how you're going to treat someone that you claimed was your friend, how might you treat me? You know, am I am I going to be next? Think think about it like that. And yes, everybody will find out because these things are not small. They're not insulated. It ends up, you know, it might end up blowing up in your face. And here's the fucking truth. What you will see from me publicly throughout all of this. Go back to before the before times, before Johnny Depp and find, I dare you, I dare you, one crossword from my mouth about anybody in LawTube until this shit came to a head. Find it. Find me bad mouth legal bites once. Find me bad mouth anybody doesn't Once. exist because it didn't happen. Because I don't, I don't care. I don't care. Even if you don't like me, I don't fucking care. Because I have 500,000 people who do. There you go. <laughs> I've learned to become immune to not being liked. It doesn't bother me. I have this wonderful advantage. Yeah, just do your own thing. Where... You have to have 500,001 people to not like me before I start to give a shit. And that's only starting. That's only starting it. to give a shit. <laughs> but I mentioned the struggle session. I mentioned oh, it the other God, day. Oh, God, these freaking and struggle sessions. Spoiler alert. The person who was subject to the struggle session was legal mindset. And he, of course, my guy, Andrew, he disclosed that today. I'm not disclosing anything. I have sat on this. Jeez. I've sat on this Poor since Andrew, I learned man. it at Matsuri. He's a good boy. Now, I know I know not all of you are uh, followers of um, Legal Mindset's locals. You should uh, be. I subscribe to his locals today. What are you doing with your life? Uh, to hear to see what he <laughs> said on video and uh, to show him some support. Yeah. And I was able to do so because you guys have given me so many fucking locals coins that I was just like, oh, click. And join my locals too. Plug uh, radixverum.locals.com. Thank you. <laughs> Done. But um. so anyway, Mindset said he was going to talk about the drama one time. Actually, he did it twice because <laughs> I don't think he liked the first time. I don't think he liked how it happened the first time, uh, uh, but he did. He hates. So he stuff, did kind guys. of refine it for the second time. He doesn't like the drama. You're not paying for his local. You don't have no to pay for does. his locals. He talked about. I'm going to summarize. But you should. I'll just say you should pay for his locals because that's the place where he can go off for real and say things that he can't say on other platforms. If you know what I mean, wink, wink. That's what happened, right here, right here, right now. I'm just saying that's where this, that's where the information came from. Okay. Cause, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll flesh out the story a little bit more. I mentioned 
before that at least, and I only know of one. I only know of one. I suspect there may have been more, but I don't know. After the DUI guy stuff, I did the video about, uh, it's not about legal bites. This is what she didn't get. And apparently what her husband didn't get. Yeah, this and is everybody interesting. Everybody jumped on Drex. Yep. Everybody jumped on Drex. Oh, he's saying, mean. Even if they were against legal bites, they're like, I don't like what Drex said about her husband. Her husband didn't belong in this. Oh, he, he he's not involved in this. That's going after family is wrong. What beta scent married this bra? <laughs> sure, can someone send me pictures? I know someone's got pictures. You, I, I got some girls on Twitter. I need y'all to send me some. DM me. I love. Drex. I want to see what Beta sent Mary this broad. I know Dude, you guys I love support him. Drex. Like I, I know. I love Drex. Shout out to Drex, Midtown Podcast, Absolute King. No, and Drex uh, again. I have no problems with this because I knew the truth. I knew the reality of it. See, I know the actual story. There's always more to the story that you don't know. You're not getting the full picture. There are things going on in the background that other people are not privy to. And so they don't have the full picture. And then people want to rush to judgment or take sides. And it's like, um, there's always three sides to a story. One person's side, the other person's side, and then the truth, right? But, hey... Not my style, not my style, but it's now it's out in the open. I'm going to talk about it. I got to grift my own fucking drama. After the DUI guy stuff, I did a video that was not about legal bites. It was not about legal bites. It started out, I was going to do a video about legal bites. And if you remember that stream, I think it starts at 57 minutes into the stream. Yeah. I'm still Ryan. Uh, I'm going to have Ryan clip it because I want that video I want that fucker up on my YouTube. I want the proof of what happened in that stream Yep. because it has been misrepresented and I oh, don't yeah. like being misrepresented. I, I tell you the fucking truth. That's right. So tell the truth about me. That's it. It's it's really simple. It's really easy. Well, and the thing was, guys, lots of people were tuned in watching that as it happened. I was one of those people watching him talk about it as it happened. So... And she did that to Andrew, too, by the way. She took this tiny little clip and tried to say Andrew doesn't care if he's being a communist or whatever. And that wasn't what he said. I can't stand that. When people take a tiny little clip, play it out of context, and then completely misrepresent what is actually being said and what actually happened, thinking that you're too stupid to go look it up and find the truth. I started to do a stream about... Legal Bites's weird DUI guy apology. And she started to play that stream in her PowerPoint presentation <laughs> the PowerPoint. for her proposed struggle session, right? If you guys saw that, I know most- Dude, who makes a freaking PowerPoint for a struggle session? A, that is total, you know, commissar, Politburo, like nonsense, okay? Yes, um, the- uh... You're sleeping in your bed in the middle of the night in like the East German stuff, the, the secret police, the NKVD come pounding on the door, the Cheka, and they'd say, open up, bang, 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 bang. We uh, have some information here that um, you committed a thought crime. We're going to need to bring you down <laughs> to the gulag and we're going to have a struggle session and we've created this PowerPoint. <laughs> We've created this PowerPoint presentation. Most of you did. And that's the stream where I said, this is the problem with online communities. Not yes. with legal bites. I In started general, to play her video. I played about a minute of it. And I was like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this to her. Because it's not about her. It's about the message. What he was doing was trying to take a situation that was happening that everybody was talking about and use that to say, hey, guys, I'm going to make a general message about 
the problem with online communities in general. He was not going after her. And by the way, people that watched that thought, oh, he's going soft on her. Oh, he's trying to help her out. That's what we were thinking when we watched it. We were not sitting there going, oh my gosh, he is calling her out. He's being cruel and unfair. No, if you saw the comments in there, most people were like, oh man, you know, you're kind of covering for her because she's your friend. That's like what people were saying. He was trying to mitigate the damage and he was trying to say, hey guys, this isn't really her fault. This is just, you know, something that happens. She was in a bad situation. You know, she made a mistake. We all make mistakes. None of us are perfect. And what he was trying to do was say to other content creators, hey, here's how you can learn from this too so you can avoid having something similar happen to you. And I stopped playing the video. Now, she stopped my video right before that, where it looks like I'm about to go through her whole stream, but I didn't. I went through like, it was seriously like a minute, two minutes, something like that. She stopped it to make it look like I started to go through her whole fucking stream. Yep. But this is the kind of loyalty that this guy will present. If you don't know, some shit happened today. Some shit happened today. Now, I have heard that there's some stuff going on with this. Let's try and get the latest information, shall we? Oh, shit. Here we go. Here we go again. Are, are, do you guys want to do this? I don't know how much of this we're going to do. We'll start this up. This was a total. This is probably not going to be what it's going to be for me, but we'll see. All right, and I think we're live. So, yeah, you there can are see it. Many people that I have talked to uh, in the last I don't know how many hours who have um, advised me not to say or do anything, or if I do. To do something in a very, very, very closely guarded kind of way. So, uh, look, whatever I say today uh, is not directed at legal bites as a person. Okay. So, mm -hmm. rather than talk to me personally, rather than ask if I'm okay, rather than give me any bit of counseling on the side as, as a fellow creator, as a smaller creator, as somebody who has looked up to him, he decided to make an example out of me. That's not what he did. Whatever I say today uh, is not directed at legal bites as a person, okay? So I, I want to make that very clear. I think Alita is is fine and, and a wonderful person. Um, oh, see? That's an uncharitable pause. Just like uh, um, She's just looking down. Uh, so here we go. Um, she made a big blunder today, in my opinion. Everybody um, knew and, that. And it's, uh, it's been a mess. It wasn't a secret. And now she's in a really tough position. The people advising her to not say anything are probably right. Uh, but she's going to do what people are not advising her to do, which is also probably right. See? Because you can't always listen to advice. Uh, she has a no, this is a no win prospect for her. And uh, I don't know if anybody has seen, um, but but she took a pretty sizable subscriber hit He was, he hit was trying to uh, help Lots her. of people have unsubscribed. Thousands of people have unsubscribed because of this incident. And we're going to talk about avoiding these types of incidents and navigating this water because this shouldn't have ever happened. That's the main lesson here. And it's not her fault that this happened entirely. Well, she is responsible see, for her own decisions. Don't I mean. get me wrong, but there is something else going on uh, in this, in this space. This that we're going to get into. And to I'm going to try and tell you 
why you need to run from this shit like the fucking plague has manifested into a Disney villain. <laughs> and by Disney villain, I mean a Disney oh exec on set with liquor, suckers, and an eye for children. You need to run as far away from this shit as possible. Oh my God, that was epic. I I don't... I'm not really sure exactly how I am where I am right now, but I guess the first thing that I want to do is to say that I, I today I... I came to realize that I've said some things in the in a couple different ways that uh, have come across in a way that is not the way that I intended and clearly not received well. And I understand why some things have not been received well. Um, you never want to be making this video. Exactly. He was trying to help her. I don't know how much of this I'm going to watch. I, I don't want to watch I all I don't have any minutes. excuses for the way that I, I've come across to some people. Um, but... The one thing that I would request, if people will allow me, is a little bit of space to explain things from my perspective, because I feel like there's been a lot of communication from from other people. I don't know. I I, I don't I don't I don't want to I don't want to do I don't want to do any I don't want to do anything. I <laughs> the last no I I know how, I'm not laughing at her. I know how she feels. What do you, what are you supposed to do? What the yeah. hell are you supposed to do? The building's on fire. That's it. I didn't do that. I didn't sit and play it and, and watch her weepy video. He didn't. That was literally it. Did he was trying was to help talk her. very clearly about missteps that people make in regards to community. And I did not condemn her once nope. in that video. No. I said she makes, she made some mistakes because of my opinion. Her channel grew really fast. She made a bunch of money. She was scared and she wanted to protect it. And I said, I understand because it, I, I, I saw it. I saw it with Rittenhouse. I watched my income explode, explode. Uh, with Rittenhouse, I made, I made a house worth of money. There you go. <laughs> he was trying I, to I, help. I joked about on the, on the Rittenhouse verdict stream, I made a, a fucking Nissan Sentra worth of money, right? Like that was the joke. I was making fun of Ethan Ralph, but it was Based. also true. It was the also guns. true. When when these huge trials are on and you have 80, 100,000 people in there, every stream is making $8,000, $9,000 a day, which is why you do it. And why you sacrifice your sleep and why you yep. sacrifice fucking everything because you go, holy shit, in this period of time, I can make 50, 60, 70, a hundred thousand dollars. And, and you can't even read all the chats. The joke, I have a running joke. I have 6,000 chats, super chats from Kyle Rittenhouse unread. You can't, you can't keep up. It's just numbers. It's just numbers. If I would have tried to keep up, I've done the math on it. It's it's days of streaming. So um, so here we go. So you go through these, you you just make a ton of money, and and that's how it goes because there's if eighty thousand people are watching, and ten percent contribute, this is that's eight thousand chats. It's not that high but it's above 1%. So you get something like 2 to 5% monetary participation at some level. Well, that's all you, you get need. 1500 chats at $20 a piece. That's not what you get by the way. That And I would encourage everybody if you're listening to subscribe to my channel. Right now we just hit 8,000 subscribers. We're trying to get to 15,000 subscribers. So if you wouldn't mind, hit the like button, leave a comment, try to comment four words or more and share the video. Tell other people about the channel if you enjoy the kinds of things that I do here. It's, it's a shitload of money, 30 grand. It's a lot that's of money. Not, that's not how that works. But you get 1,500 chats and the average chat amount is about seven, eight bucks. Yeah. Okay, so you make a ton of money.
This is very, very critical part of this. Yep. And when you make that much money in one shot, you go, holy fuck, how do I do this all the time? Exactly. That's your first thought. That's, that's the thought you have when you're new, when you've never done this before. It doesn't keep up. It will never, ever keep up, which is great. And it shouldn't. It shouldn't keep up. I would love it, by the way. Look, I will wear underwear bikinis or uh, <laughs> underwear bikinis. I wear money bikinis. Fuck everything if I could, right? Like <laughs> happy to do it, but it doesn't keep up because you that content, it's a mix of the content creator plus the situation. Yep. And so when you get that perfect harmony, it happens. And then and then it goes away for a while. Yeah. But when you first get it, you're like, oh no, this could happen all the time. Which is foolish thinking. This can happen all the time. And you go, what if someone comes in to stop this? And that's what I said effectively in the video. Legal Bites got caught up with, oh my God. And, and think about it this way. Think about it this way. She probably made more money covering Johnny Depp than maybe in her entire legal career. Wow. I did. Yes. Think about that. That's amazing. And it's terrifying in just a couple to think, weeks. Oh shit, that's going to go away. Yep. Okay. So that's the background. And I want to be very clear. I did not criticize her of that. I said, I've been there. I know what it's like. It will not last. And these are missteps. And this is my lesson to everybody based on my experience. That did not sit well with her. Most importantly, her husband. Which was ridiculous because he didn't say anything that was, you know, mean or nasty. He said nothing about her personally. He said she's a wonderful person. She's a good person. This is just a situation that could happen to anybody. And he was trying to give generalized advice to help more people than just her. She and her husband didn't like that, I guess. Which is silly and petty. It's stupid. Now, when legal mindset... I, I misspoke a little bit on the details because I was unclear on the details. I said that, uh, that, that someone had a struggle session when they got to the wedding. That's, that's the inaccurate part. Turns out it was by zoom prior to the wedding. So it was like, I think Andrew said it was like a week or two before he went to the wedding, they set up a zoom session and legal bites and husband bites together confronted legal mindset. Imagine that. Imagine you get invited to what you are told is your friend's wedding. And prior to the wedding, they say, oh, yeah, um, before you come to a wedding that we invited you to, we're going to have to sit you down and have a Zoom meeting with you. Uh, what? What? Could I, I just can't fathom somebody saying that to me and having to be put in that kind of bizarre, awkward situation. It is really ridiculous. Like, they're the parents that are going to scold the child or something. Like, you don't get to treat human beings that way. What is wrong with you? What goes through your mind? Why would you invite someone to your wedding as a guest, someone who you say is your friend, but then lecture them like they're a child over a Zoom session. There's no other way to describe that other than a struggle session. That is what it is. And they wanted a loyalty test to her. That is also really weird. It's almost as if that she knew she was going to kind of have some spat with him or that in the background, what she was trying to do was to go around to every single person in the so-called law tube community and struggle session them and demand loyalty or fealty to her. And it makes me think that perhaps she was going to publicly go after Nick Ricada. And she wanted to make sure that before she did that, she would have people on her side. And it's really, really interesting because 
you start to see who the kinds of who people really are in situations like this. You know, I've been in a position where I thought people were my friends. I supported them, donated to them, told my audience to do the same thing. Hey, you can trust these people. These are my friends. I vouch for them. I put my word, which means something. It matters to me. My word means something. And I tell people, I'm vouching for this person, support them. I'm supporting them. I'm promoting them. And then it turns around. They turn around and, and they're doing the same thing in the background. They're reaching out to all your friends. They're gossiping about you. They're trying to tell people you have to pick sides because they were planning something. And what they wanted to do was to make sure they had their little eggs in order first prior to doing what they did. Oh, let me make sure people are going to be loyal to me. Let me run around gossiping about someone and spreading, you know, lies and and all of that just, you know, so I can what? Cause some kind of drama and division in a community of people that for the most part are on the same side, you know, and should be working together. And a lot of this, by the way, comes from a scarcity mindset. You're operating at a lower level. OK, you're playing these silly games. I'm not playing those games. I'm operating at a higher level. I am busy building things, working on things. I don't have time for this petty nonsense. And that's what it is. They wanted to know if he was loyal to her. And according to legal mindset, these are his words. It's what he expressed to me at Montsuri as well. They both expressed that they disliked me specifically. That they were mad at me about the DUI guy situation and what he said in his first video, but is not in his second video, is that Mr. Bites wanted to fight me. Unbelievable. For what? Because he made a video trying to help not only elite, but other people. And he was defending her, actually. People were saying, oh, he's kind of running cover for her, trying to protect her after she did something really dumb. And I get it, guys. Like, we all make mistakes. I've done it, too. I've made mistakes or I've done things, you know, that maybe I regretted. But all you do is you it's called being accountable. You say, yeah, I screwed up here. I should have done better. And, um, you know, I made a mistake. And moving forward, I'm not going to do that anymore. It is really that simple. But to get that enraged at somebody for what? The fact that they didn't kiss your feet or something? It's it's insane to me. But at the same time, I have experienced the same thing. So you can help someone, you can support them, you can be their friend, you can promote them, you can benefit them with what he gave. She gained 50,000 subscribers being on Nick's channel during Rittenhouse. And it all it takes to, uh, I guess, for her to just decide that she doesn't like you anymore after you've done so much for her is one little thing. You make a comment about her. You dare to provide some constructive criticism, right? You dare to help hold someone accountable, which, by the way, is what a good friend does. Good friends aren't going to lie to you and tell you, oh, no, honey, you know, you look good in that dress when you look like a whale. Good friends don't do that. They'll tell you the truth, even if it's a harsh truth, because at the end of the day, they are trying to help you. So it that is the measure in, of a good friend is someone who loves you so much, cares about you so much. They are willing to tell you the truth. They're willing to give you those harsh truths when it matters, not because they want to be nasty to you, not because they want to hurt you or get one over on you but because they know your potential and they want to see you live up to it. They want to see you become the person they know you can be. They want to see you succeed. That's what he was trying to do for her. He wanted her to succeed and he was trying to give her what she needed, but not just for her, 
but for other people as well so they can avoid the same thing because Rakeda does not have a scarcity mindset. He has an abundance mindset. He just talked about it when he talked about doing these trial streams and you're getting all this money. And he has said this before. There, Everybody out there wants to support these things. They want to give you money. They want you to be able to have the platform and the success to continue to provide good content for them, okay? Everybody can be successful. There's 7 billion people on the planet. There's so many people you can reach. So get out of this scarcity mindset of like, oh, this is my competitor. You're thinking so small when you should be thinking much bigger. But anyways, the point is, is that he is trying to help her and he was trying to help other people as well. And because of that one thing, her husband wanted to fight him. That is the most childish thing I can imagine. And by the way, he was being a good friend. He was being honest with her. And he was trying to provide that same honesty for others. Physically. And he comes from the gate saying, this, these words, Rakeda Law is a piece of shit. If I met him, I would confront him. I would, I would come at this guy. If I knew this guy, if I saw him in person, it would be over. That'd be it. It'd be fucking done. We'd have words. Now, I, I, of course. That's insane. Why? Because someone talked about your wife who made herself a public figure, who is a public content creator with tons of people following and watching her. She's above constructive criticism. Come on. That is ludicrous. I'm very, very intimidated by anyone who is mainlining testosterone <laughs> so hard that they want to get into a physical fist fight. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm very scared of this, of course. I thought it was so funny. Because that is not just rampant beta faggotry it that, is that is perfectly rational that is not behavior. manly but it is what it is and no he's definitely not as tall um oof but Felted. that being said i don't i'm gonna say this two ways one time one I live in physical fear of zero men on this fucking planet. Hot. <laughs> you cannot make me afraid of you. Not because I'm specifically strong or skilled. I don't, not Liam Neeson. I don't have a particular set of skills. It doesn't matter, <laughs> but it's about being a fucking man. Damn right. It's about being a fucking man. And that if someone wants to step up and intimidate you, you stand there, you smile, you say, this is silly. Because it is. And you walk away. That's how, that's how I deal with problems. Someday, I'm sure I'm going to get fucking clocked in the back of the head <laughs> from it. Probably. But it hasn't happened yet. Because I don't, I don't accept fear as my option. That's right. Again, this is not a tough guy routine. The last thing I fear is the mind killer. I want to do in my life is get in a fight. I'm 40. My knees are bad. <laughs> I'm tired. I get winded. <laughs> I can't breathe. 23, I'll fight everybody. <laughs> 40, I'll fight children. <laughs> That's it. So I'm not, I'm not trying to be a tough guy on the internet, but I also will not live in fear of anyone. Dang right. I too, it's just ridiculous. Too much of my life it's has nonsense. been spent getting out of anybody's influence to be afraid. So, that being said, I don't care, though. Big talk on the internet or big talk in a private Zoom meeting, cool. Have at it. Have at it. I don't fucking give a shit. That was the one way I was going to say that. The two way I was going to say that is um, you will not catch me this is part of the first way, but morphing into it. You will not catch me threatening to fight someone on the internet. I don't, I don't want to do it. It's I don't silly. have any time for it's it. It's stupid. And if, if anybody wants to call me like weak or whatever, 
Just look at my shoulders. I'll take it. It's fine. <laughs> okay. But that was the struggle session. It was a loyalty test. It was a loyalty test. Legal mindset, according to him, said, I am my own man. Nobody tells me what to do. I am an independent content creator. I love that about Andrew. Of course, he's a king. So, there you go. Independent content creator. You don't get to tell him what to do. Eventually, they accepted that answer. And he went to he went to the wedding. <sighs> Great. Which perfectly fine, by the way. Of course. Of course. I just think that's insane. Now, what he also expressed in that video, which I think is still up on his locals, and I'm sure has been clipped to death, and will probably have uploads in the next couple days. What has been expressed in that video was that at the wedding, he heard several specifically negative comments about me. That's disgusting. In person. Okay, so imagine you're at somebody's wedding. This is supposed to be a special day, you know, maybe the best day in their lives. And they're spending that time gossiping like a gaggle of rejects. They have such little uh, lives that Rakeda lives in their minds rent free. They're sitting there sneeding about him and gossiping about, oh, that Rakeda. Oh, my God. He's so mean. Really? You got nothing better to do? You're at a wedding and that's all you can think about? The other thing is, who does that? Who talks like that? If you know, hey, uh, we're all in, in kind of the same community here and we're all at, a, at an event... Why would you say something negative about somebody behind their back? Like, you know, he's not there. Rakeda wasn't at the wedding. So you don't have the guts to say it to his face, but you'll do it behind his back, sneaky little backstabbers. That is why I can't stand this stuff. I can't stand this behavior. And I'm kind of done with these online communities. I've had enough of it because the same thing is happening to me. People that say nothing to your face, they're running around, trashing you, gossiping about you. And it's that that's all they have. It's like, I have so much going on. I'm working on a documentary. I'm writing articles. I'm making videos. I'm going on other uh, shows. I'm talking to other people. I'm doing actual real work, hard work. I don't have time for these games, you know, because I'm actually doing, I am building things. And they are destroying things. They're not building a community. They're not building people that are helping each other. They're not building something positive in the world. They're, they're destroying positive things with that behavior because it is toxic. Amongst other uh, law tubers, right? Now, mind you, Andrew told this to me at Anime Matsuri. So that long ago. That was July 29th. So he's Since known. July 29th, have I said a negative word about Legal Bites or her husband? No. Ever. Nope. Well, aside from the other day. No, Long after he, this he stuff didn't. had come out. He didn't say anything. Not only did I not do that, but when I was on stream, and I think this was after that, I think this was after that, I think I was on Eric Hunley's channel. I was on with Legal Bites. The tension was fucking thick. Thick. The chat was all snakes. <laughs> and I believe, if I remember... I said, hey, guys, stop trying to make drama. Yep. There's no drama here. I'm good with everybody. I am fine. And we don't need any of that at all. Because it's, Let's just it is toxic. Let's just go on. We're just going to do our own. Like, we're, we're content. We make our own things. 
I'm good. But the thing, the thing that gets me about this chat, uh, or about the chat and, and its reactions, all of us like each other just fine. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. We don't have any problems. Look at the look uh, on and, her and face. These, these, like, drama things that happen get exacerbated uh, by by chatting. They, they get kind of invested in, in feelings in it. But you guys should know, that, like, all of us, we're all good. Like, we're we're fine. So you don't need to uh, like do anything on anyone's behalf or anything like that, because that's yeah. just, it's all water <laughs> under the bridge. Joe, that was funny. Yeah. See, that's what I said. I knew everything at, at that, that time. point in time. Yep. Unreal. But the way you handle this shit is to just let it fucking go yep and frankly the drama is distracting from the content sure short term grift mm -hmm. great make make a little money off of it <laughs> right it's fun <laughs> but in the long term it's like okay this it's is toxic. a band-aid it's a band-aid of a show you don't want to do it and it destroys people the stories relationship. And I could have done like the drama grift stream like tomorrow or something to address the new stuff with legal mindset. Probably could have pulled in a bunch of viewers and made a bunch of money. Fuck it. Like I'd rather tell you guys anyway. Um, but but like so you do the little drama grift, but I didn't since July do that. And when it came up, when it was addressed, always I said, Yeah, no, everything's good. Don't worry. Like Let's just, let's just, come on, guys. We're all good. We're all good. And then she tried to do a public struggle session. Contrast that. Then she went after With him. the recent words of legal bites about me and what I've done. Yep, exactly. That's all I think I need to say on this subject. But that the entire fucking time, I said, nah. It's all good. Knowing that it was not good from one side. Right. Going, I don't care. Like, you can be mad at me. I don't need, I don't need you to not be mad at me. I just don't want this shit to be a thing where I have to deal with it constantly. Because at the end of the day, even though I love the drama grift from time to time, <laughs> it gets tiring talking about this shit. It really does. And it's truly toxic. So I want to play this final clip and then we'll wrap this up um, where he addresses the problem of these online communities and how it inevitably turns out. There can be no law tube drama if there is no law tube. Exactly. Law tube is fucking gay. It is so shit. It is dumb. It's a bad idea. It is a bad implementation. And I talked about this. None of this matters. Mm -hmm. This is all stupid because we're not an organization. Exactly. We're not part of some special little club. Everybody should just be independent doing their own thing. And never should be. Ever. For fuck's sake, <laughs> stop begging to be a thing. I don't care how shitty and little your YouTube channel is and how much you really want to grift off of someone else in network at will as if there's some expectation that you'll be invited to the party. There is no party. Yep. Unless you want it. I mean, if, if you guys want it, not you, the chat. I'm talking to the other content creators out there. If you guys want your little weird commie circle jerk, have the fuck at it. But I tried to tell you, stop doing this. You are independent. And if you're independent and failing, then fucking fail. And then get better and try something else or try again. Yes. Don't be independent failures and then go, oh, well, if only I had a network of people to mooch off of, then we'll be successful. Wait a minute. The we there was weird because you were failing and the other person wasn't. 
So if you're failing and the other person isn't failing, we don't become successful together. You are taking from them something and trying to bolster yourself. But you're not learning how to fucking do it. Exactly. This is the problem. You're not getting any better at it. You're just relying on the concept of law tube to increase your own or to cover up your own inadequacy. Oh, stop it. Dang. Some of you need to fail. Yes. Some of you are really, really bad at this. They are. I'm not going to name names. And I'm not saying fail forever, but you need to fuck up and realize that you have fucked up. And that your show format is bad. Yes. Your jokes aren't good. Your personality isn't good it for needs this. Some work. Whatever it is, I don't know. I don't have a comprehensive list of who is what. But some people can hold an audience and others can't. And them's just the fucking ropes of Oof. entertainment. <laughs> and if you can't handle that, fucking leave. Or get better. But stop like demanding other people to be responsible for your failures. That's it's right. The biggest problem with this fucking group. <laughs> I love it. And guys, I have had so many conversations behind the scenes. And I won't ever say with who. Mm -hmm. But uh, absolutely just raw fucking entitlement. Oh my God. Just. Right? Well, we need to do this. We... You need to help out here. Have this person on. Have me on. Come on my show. Not like there are people who ask, of course. A lot of my friends, you know, hey, would you like to come on this day? Hey, uh, you, you doing anything where you could use another voice? Sure. Fine. Cool. But some people, it's like, well, we have to do this. We have to do that. No. No, fuck off. Stop it. <laughs> These people are trying to make a network and they're trying to do it. Well, I should be getting these subs. I should be getting these views. I should X. I should Y. I should Z. And a lot of these people popped up. I mean, their channels popped up out of nowhere really yep. quickly, uh, grew. And they're like, well, I deserve this. No. No. You you caught a good you caught a good wave and you wrote it. You didn't deserve now, do anything. Something with Nobody this. deserves any of this. Nobody deserves Earn success it. on social media. Nope. Nobody deserves it. You work your fucking ass off and you find those waves and you ride them, you ride them to shore, man. And then you paddle out and you do it again. But you notice some people. Man, they go that like they're that wave, they are on top of the world. And then once that wave crashes, they are in the fucking dumpster. And they have no idea how to get out. And they expect, like, well, I've been doing this for months. <laughs> months? Jesus Christ. Try five We're years. We're all fucking charmed. <laughs> We're all charmed. Like, I've been doing this for five years, and I am charmed in my growth. Damn There's right. a bunch of people out there who've been doing these, uh, who've been doing YouTube or or yeah, whatever for, years. for 10 years plus. And, it's so and their channels hard. are stuck and they yep. can't get the algorithm yep. and they can't get the audience. And these yep. aren't bad YouTubers. These are not bad content creators. That's right. But some of the people in LawTube absolutely are. Oh, yeah. So I'm calling it out. And they're boring. Some of them are boring as hell. And this is why I'm not in it. Never wanted to be in it. Will never be in it. Because the level of entitlement and circle jerkery that can go on in those types of groups makes me want to die. Yes. I can't stand it either. And I know the same thing where you're expected to, um, you know, where people will come to you when, when you have something going on that everyone wants to talk about right now. An example for me was my coverage of the Whitmer thing. I had been covering that for two years prior to it going to trial, prior to, you know, meeting people that were victims of that. Um, I had been covering it since October 7th of 2020. 
And then when it's in the news or when it's popular, people are talking about it. Then people want, you know, they expect you to kind of come on to talk about it or whatever. Uh, and they'll, and I don't have a problem with that at all. I like to do that. But there are certain people who only want something from you. And then where's the reciprocation? You don't get it. You get none. And then if you do one little thing they don't like, they'll go off on you or whatever. It is absolutely bizarre. And this is the general problem with these online communities. People get way too invested in them. You know, and, I, and it's like you don't have a life outside of the internet. Go outside and touch some grass. This isn't the real world. You don't know how to talk to normal people. Um, you know, that's your problem. And then you want these loyalty tests. You want people to, you know, do things for you, but you're not willing to do anything for them or it's one-sided or whatever. Um, it's ignorant. And anyone who thinks they're entitled to subscribers or entitled to views needs to get off the fucking internet right now. Nobody owes you shit. You are trying to get into one of the most charmed lives possible. <laughs> Guys, my life <laughs> is so fucking funny and ridiculous. Like the way it works out, um, it's charmed. I'm thankful for every second of it, even the shitty seconds of it. Mm -hmm. I never thought the audience or anybody else owed me a fucking view. Right? And there are people out there who really do think that. And it's kind of embarrassing. And in, I hate it's to say sad. I told you so, but I fucking told you so. <laughs> and the second, the second that my YouTube is unsuspended, first, there's going to be an I'm back bitches video. That's going up. I'm going to grift, of course, my suspension on YouTube, my <laughs> resurrection. I love it. That all, that all has to happen. I think that's Friday that that happens. Um, but probably the next video is going to be Remember When I Said This. Yes. And I'm going to clip out that segment about LawTube and the drama and the bullshit and the entitlement. Yep, the back. Because I am Nostradamus and I called all of this stuff. He did. I called it all. And now it's happened in my community, the community that I'm part of, you know, my little online gab, uh, whatever community of people, you know, online circle of so-called friends. Um, I should have seen it coming, honestly. I didn't, but... In the back of my mind, I always knew that this stuff happens. I've dealt with it before. I'm not new to it. But it's just so disappointing because you tell yourself, you like kind of trick yourself into thinking, well, but this is going to be different this time. Like, you know what I mean? Of course, it's not going to be different. And people are just that nobody wanted to listen to it. Yep. So I'm just going to clip that segment and I'm going to post it up. Again, because I guess everybody needs to be fucking reminded. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I don't know how anybody doesn't get this. So. And before, before anybody uh, wants to come out and be like, he's talking about this person or that person. No. I'm speaking very generally, and I'm saying that I hold an opinion that I will not share about some content creators being shit. But I don't shit on people specifically unless they shit on me. That's right. And I don't think anybody has lately. I mean, if they want if they want to do the man dance, we can do that, I guess, but I'm not really looking for that. And then look what happened. Isn't that interesting? Of course. So why I'm telling they? people they need to be self and self analyzing, self aware. 
of just how entitled they sound. Yes, arrogant. Of just how ridiculous the uh, the idea of some sort of blood debt that the chat owes to us is. That's retarded. And the sort of debt that other creators owe to anybody. Nobody owes anybody anything. We're all individual and we always should be. And if you want, like, if you want to sacrifice that into a gay little group, enjoy what comes with it, motherfucker. But never, ever, ever ask me to be a part of it. Miss me with that shit. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and he's so right, you know. Every single time these little groups are created, this is inevitably what happens. And it is destructive. It is toxic. And it doesn't benefit anybody. Nothing good comes out of that. And I understand what he's saying. And I also want to say before I end this video, there is a difference, okay? There's a difference between, you know, being part of this gay little group, circle jerking each other, right? Jerking each other off. Oh, you're, we're so great, you know? We're, we're going to create this little insular community and you're not going to be allowed to be part of our cool kids club and we're going to oust people we don't like. There's a difference between that and then when someone like Rakeda is mass targeted unfairly, has their Twitter, Twitch, YouTube channel acts to ask those people to stand up for him. Because it isn't just for him. It is for every single one of you. You should have stood up for him because it will be you next. Because what happens to one person can happen to another and probably will if they get away with it. If you let somebody mass flag someone and unfairly have their entire channel deleted, you will be next and you will get what you deserve if you don't speak up and you don't say something. And that goes for other platforms too, not just YouTube. If you see something wrong happen to someone that didn't deserve it, that their entire channel just gets taken down, if you say nothing and you continue to support that platform that allowed it to happen or did it themselves, then you have no one to blame but yourself when it inevitably happens to you. And so that is where I'll end this video. I just think this entire thing is ridiculous. I wanted to show this not to say anything bad personally about Legal Bites or her husband, but to showcase for you the problem and how toxic these online communities can be and how it seems like there's a certain personality that does feel entitled, that does expect and demand a community of people to be loyal to them, and that if we say we don't like Rakeda, we want you to be loyal to us, expect people to take sides. Um, it's absolutely unacceptable. Everybody's adults grow up and start acting like one, and... Um, you know, that's all I have to say. I think that, you know, people show, they eventually reveal themselves. You don't have to expose them. You don't have to go after them. If they betray you, stab you in the back, if they hurt you, if they're lying about you, gossiping about you, trying to create a community of people to go after you or to go after other people or to prevent, you know, certain people from working together, you don't have to do anything to them. You don't have to expose them. They eventually always expose themselves. People will see the truth. People can see, hey, you're doing your thing. You're doing work. You're not sitting here bad-mouthing anyone. You're not trashing people. You're not digging people or dragging them when they've done it to you. But these other people are. And if they're willing to do that to their so-called friends or to anybody, really, then who's to say I'm not going to be next? Uh, the people recognize this stuff they see it for what it is it's childish it's petty ultimately it's destructive to everyone and it serves no real purpose other than to make people feel better about themselves because their life is so boring and so bad that that is the only thing that they have in their life is just talking about other people and trying to then say i'm better than them you know, whatever. It's just ridiculous. Anyways, I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments below. How do you feel about 
this whole infighting, this drama, threatening to fight people. Like, this is, uh, you know, she made a video talking about dealing with bullies online, but her husband was saying, I'm going to fight this guy. That sounds more like a childhood, you know, a schoolyard bully to me than anybody else here in this situation. And I want to know your thoughts on online communities and what it is like being online, being a content creator, collaborating with other people, having, you know, groups of people or friends, and then seeing people kind of, you know, just destroy other people or try to tear down other people. Do you think that it is possible for any online community to not end up devolving into backstabbing, gossip, betrayal, slander, nonsense? Do you think that's possible? Um, and if so, uh, why would, why? Like, I, I'm kind of interested to see, like, because every time I've told myself it's going to be different this time, it usually never ends up that way. And I think that that is probably due to, um, human nature. I think we're fallen people. And I think that we all tend to make mistakes. We all tend to be, you know, we're all sinners, I guess. And I think that it's easy to get caught up in things too, especially when other people are doing it. You know, it's the easy thing to do if everyone else is doing it. People just kind of jump on these bandwagons. And um, yeah, so I want to know if you think that these communities can exist and can be cooperative, collaborative, and not end up, you know, uh, turning into a dumpster fire. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I hope you um, stick around because I do a lot of different content and, uh, you know, I like to get my opinion out there and I want to hear from you guys. I think that's actually the best is reading your comments because you guys always think about something that I missed or I didn't think of. You have a perspective that's different from mine that is valuable, that other people deserve to hear and that should be shared with other people. So don't keep it to yourself. Share it with everybody so we can learn from you and get your insights.